Hey guys, back again, and what is this, number 10, October 10th, this is my 10th horror movie review for 31 Days of Horror, I've amazingly been able to keep this going, so, uh, this time I actually watched a movie that I've seen before, but I've got this special Criterion collect, uh, collection edition and <clears throat> this Blu-ray, and so I watched the movie again to get a fresh viewing. And it is The Brood by David Cronenberg, and I talked about how David Cronenberg is one of my favorite directors right next to David Lynch, because he is so surreal and different and just really good. And I think that at least a couple of his movies, I think, can be classified as horror. A lot of his movies are just kind of surreal and strange, and, um, you know, horror can involve a lot of things, like I said, but I think that a lot of people would agree that The Brood is pretty... Pretty horrifying. It's in the it's in the horror category. I think it reminds me of other horror movies, and um, I think that Dead Ringers might too. I haven't seen that for a while, but I remember you know it has surgeons, and I remember some of their creepy surgeon tools that they use. And I know a friend really likes that movie, and I want to do a review on that. So I was considering doing that, but I thought I'll save that for another time because I know like The Brood is definitely like a horror kind of movie and uh, he has other ones that um, you know I don't know if Scanners is really horror there's a lot of movies that he does that have blood and gore and stuff like graphic content but they might not really be considered in the horror genre but you know I'm trying to think of some other ones because I know there's some that I haven't seen I know like Rabbit and they're kind of like maybe like zombie-ish type movies I don't know but yeah. Shivers uh, I need to see those but anyway, so I've just watched The Brood, and it is creepy, and it is a grade A movie. And I mean, I know that I'm biased, that I love David Cronenberg, but I really think, you know, some of, some of the things, especially like I guess the musical score and stuff, kind of reminded me of The Shining, and I think that's a really good um, thing for this movie. Um, of course, The Shining with Stanley Kubrick is an awesome director, and having Jack Nicholson and everything, it's like the total package. So, I think this can be pretty close to it. I don't know if it's that good, but it is really, really great. And, I mean, it would definitely be, like, at the top of the list of some of the greatest horror movies of all time. You know, a lot of movies that I've talked about, like Cabin Fever and stuff, I don't expect a lot of people to really love that. It's, like, a cult favorite. It's, like, just a personal favorite. But, you know, a movie like The Brood is really, like, a blockbuster movie. So... Anyways, uh, I did take some notes on this one that I'm going to be looking at. I took a whole page of notes and I just kind of scribbled as I was watching it. But just to talk about the plot or if anything stuck out to me or if anything reminded me of anything else because I like to compare things. But basically there's a father, I think his name is Frank, and there's a girl named Candy or Candice, uh, Candy for short. And I think that her mom's name is Nora and I'll have to look at the back of the the Blu-ray, see if they give a synopsis or something. I didn't really, again, put a whole lot of <laughs> looking in this stuff again before doing this, even though I just watched it, but I think it sounded like a name, or Nola, maybe it was Nola, why did I say Nora, or maybe it was, was it Nola? Anyway, um, you know, I might have kind of a problem with just going over every single scene that happens in the movie, and then I kind of just want to go over the notes, too, but I want to say that the girl in the movie, the Candace girl, she reminds me of the girl in the Poltergeist, and so she's kind of creepy in her own way. You know, sometimes little kids can be creepy, kind of. The way that she acts, she doesn't talk a lot, I guess. I don't know. Um, but the way her hair's cut, it's got, like, the Betty Bangs, and she's got the blonde hair, and, you know, it's kind of like a spitting image of the... or a splitting image... <laughs> Is it spitting or splitting? I don't know. Whatever. I just make stuff up as I go along. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I just know what I like. Okay. But as far as what I remember, she looks like the girl in the poltergeist. You see her behind me. Doesn't she look like the girl in the poltergeist? Anyway, um, basically early on we see that her father like looks at her back and he sees like bruises and stuff. So he immediately thinks that her mom has been abusing him. And I don't, I didn't catch on every single detail. The mother is what's being shown now in the trailer. And she's creepy herself, but what they, I don't know how they're like split up, 
but I guess they're married. But um, I don't know if it's because she had like psychological issues and she's seeing this therapist and that's the reason why they're split up, maybe. Um, or, you know, I think that that's kind of what happened. At the beginning of the movie, we see this therapist working with this guy on a stage and there's like an audience watching him and the father of the girl, Frank, is watching, watching this happen and I think... The therapist's name, I, didn't, I don't remember his name, but he's a big part of this. Um, but he is helping this guy named Mike, or whatever, and uh, he's kind of like bringing back this childhood trauma or something of how Mike was abused by his father or something, and he's pretending to be Mike's father and letting Mike have his rage out on him. And we see that Mike has like all these sores all over his body, and... Anyway, yeah, that's at the beginning. So the girl has the bruises and stuff, and somehow this therapist is with uh, the guy's wife. I mean, he's helping her. He's supposed to be helping her, but I don't know if, like, it was hinting that they're actually in a relationship or something because um, this guy, the father, talks about, you know, wanting to take the girl, like, taking full custody and getting her away from the mom, and he goes and talks to the therapist about it, and the therapist is like, well, if you do that, like, we'll fight you in court or whatever. So it made me think that, like, they were in a relationship, but maybe not. Maybe it's just because he's so personally involved with her. So this therapist has his own, like, house where his patients, like, stay at or whatever. And, like, she's one of his patients, and that Mike guy that he's talking to is one of his patients. Um, the wife, I think, is creepy because of her eyes. She kind of has a cold stare, and, like, she never, like, blinks. Yes, I don't know, just, okay, just the way that, and she's wearing like this white kind of gown and just the way her hair is and stuff, she's like very beautiful, but she's very like creepy, but, um, and you know, this is a Canadian movie after all, David Cronenberg is a Canadian director, which I didn't know when I even made a video talking about him, I was like, I think he's American, Canadian's close enough, right, there are northern neighbors. No, it's pretty distinct. I mean, it's pretty awesome that it's a Canadian movie. Um, let's see. So we see the wife talking to the therapist, uh, the mother of this Candace girl, the one that supposedly might have abused her, and we see that the wife, Nola, or whatever, that she was abused by her own mother, and she's releasing this onto her therapist, talking about how you know, um, he plays the role as Candace at first, and he says, Mommy, why would you abuse me? And she said, I don't abuse you, Mommy, moms don't abuse, you know, moms never abuse their daughters, or whatever, and then he's like, they never abuse their daughters, and she's like, well, sometimes they do, and she's like, my mother abused me, and she starts letting all that out. Well, for the meantime, uh, this Candace girl goes to live with her grandma, or whatever, or to stay the night with her or whatever, I think, to live with her temporarily. Well, the grandma ends up getting killed by this rabid little person, or this dwarf, um, who we don't really see the face at first, it just kind of looks like a kid, in kid's clothing a little. Basically, the grandma and the daughter are talking, or the granddaughter are talking in the living room or something, and then things start happening in the kitchen, like stuff starts being knocked off the counters and stuff, like you see right happening right now in the trailer. And so there's a mess there, and the grandma goes into the kitchen, you know, what the hell's going on? And she gets pummeled to death with, like, a hammer by this little troll dwarf thing. And it's like, it, like, makes noises and stuff, like, Arr! Like, it doesn't really sound so much like a person, but it looks like a person. We don't really get a good shot of its face or anything, but it's a brutal, bloody killing. And so that's, like, the first death in the movie. And... That reminded me a lot of Dario Argento's movies, or just Italian horror movies, like the um, Gallows, which I love Dario Argento. I gotta, hopefully, maybe I'll cover one of his videos for this, I don't know. But, um, and another thing I wanted to say with covering, like, uh, what's that? <sighs> Man, I'm having a mind fart here, but the other David Cronenberg, um, deadly but losing my mind guys like Joe Biden look 
I'm thinking about only wanting to cover like one movie by each director or something. Like I talked about The Devil's Rejects, which I think is my favorite of the Rob Zombies movies, but I could talk about House of a Thousand Corpses too, and I have that, but I'm not going to do that in this 31 Days of Horror. I'm going to try to stick with like one movie per director or something, or per franchise or whatever, which maybe I've already messed that up. I don't know. I have to think about that, but anyway, it, that was just random. But yeah, that totally reminded me of the Italian horror movies because of the bloodiness of the killing and because you don't see the killer. And that's the whole thing about like the giallos is they're like murder mysteries and you see somebody like brutally murdered. You only see like the hands and the knife or, you know, you might hear their voice or something. Their voice might be distorted, but you never you, you keep wondering like who the killer really is. Um just the way it looked, it was just so... Which is a good thing, because they're great movies. I love the Italian horror movies, but... Anyway, so Grandma's dead. And, um... I talked about the sound is great. The steps, the sound effects of just the steps on the wood floors. And my, I was wearing headphones while I was listening to it. Just the... The violin plays, and that reminds me a lot of The Shining. How it's just chilling music. It's just like, it builds the tension, you know? Like... <laughs> you know? Just the sound effects and the music is great and that's what makes this a great a movie it's just another component i said the mom is mentally disturbed <laughs> you know like when she's talking about her mom abusing her and stuff and the way that she acts is like she is absolutely psycho um so he goes to visit some friend or something or somebody who the, the therapist worked for before because he wants to find out more about this therapist. He thinks he's a bad guy. He wants to get dirt on him or whatever. I don't remember. But anyways, he sees this guy who's like basically in a hospital or like in his room. And he's, he says that he has lymphosarcoma, which uh, he says he has a disease on his neck that's kind of like cancer. And he pull, he has a towel like around his neck and he's sweating a lot. And he pulls this towel back and it's like right on his throat. And it's like these growths, or like a cluster, and it's like, they're like rolls, like, it's kind of like gills or something, but that is like totally Cronenberg. Like, you see that kind of stuff in Videodrome, you see that kind of stuff basically in The Fly, basically in um, Naked Launch, a lot of his bizarre movies like that, um, he does these like mutations of the flesh and stuff, and so that's definitely like his trademark. And, you know, that was, that was definitely, um, and the guy who had that, whatever on his neck, which I'm going to ask Alexa if that's even a real disease or something, I don't know if it is. Not yet, Alexa, I saw it turn on again. Anyway, the guy that has that was in Naked Lunch, I'm pretty sure, because I recognized him, so I don't know who that actor is, but I just know that he's in David Cronenberg's Naked Lunch. Which is really probably one of my favorite Cronenberg movies, but The Fly is like one of my favorite movies of all time, so it's like, how do I say those? But, um, anyway. But somehow he developed this from the therapist, I think. And he says basically like the therapist can control it, he thinks that he's responsible. And he thinks that if he, he wants to take like the therapist to court or something, but he thinks if he pushes it too far or something that somehow the therapist will use it against him and make him die quicker or something or suffer. I don't, I don't, I kind of didn't catch everything because there's a lot involved here with the um, mental aspects. It's like, it's supposed to be like psychokinetic. I don't know what it is, how to explain it. Very convoluted, I guess. But Nola, or the, the mother, is not told about her own mother's death, okay? So when the grandma died, that was her mom. And I think the grandma's husband, I don't know if he was living with her or what, but he, he comes to the therapist's place to tell Nola that her mother died, and the therapist stops him therapist is like she doesn't know yet and he's like why doesn't she know and he's like she's at a critical stage in her therapy like she shouldn't 
this will disrupt everything like so we can't tell her you know he's basically like you're a bastard <laughs> like her mom's dead like she needs to know right we see scenes of this uh the grandpa going to the grandmother's home where basically the police lines were the the body um you know the outlines of where she died and he's really sentimental and he's kind of touching it and stuff and anyway um we see later on that the grandpa is killed by one of those creatures or the same one with a snow globe this time we see him pick up a snow globe and kill him we get kind of a better shot of the creature but we get a really clear shot of it because the dad comes to the, to the house the Frank guy comes to talk to the grandpa, goes up in the room, sees him dead, and then he goes into the bathroom and that creature is there, like we see its face and it's like, uh, uh, like it's not, can't breathe, like it's dying. And then the next scene we basically see um, that creature like on a like coroner's table or they're examining him with like the police and the doctor and they're, they're talking about all the stuff about the creature. I think that they said that he has no, they have no tongue, they have no teeth. Um, they have, you know, the body gets inspected and, but he said the really peculiar thing is that they have no sexual organs and that they have no belly button. So therefore they weren't born like normal. So very strange. What are these things? Where do they come from? Um, and so basically it hits the newspaper and it says like looking for these dwarf killers, basically, um, so the therapist knows that, that people, that this has been out or whatever, he tells people, he kicks people out of the therapist's house. He puts them on a bus, gets rid of them, except for the mother. Um, and they, so Frank goes and visits the Mike guy that was like having the session at the very beginning of the movie. And he tells him how Nola's like the queen bee, like she doesn't pay for her therapy and like she's the most important part of the project and everything. We see a scene of Frank taking his daughter Candy to school and the creatures are there in the classroom and they basically take her and put her in the bathroom or whatever, they get her out of the room and then they pick up these little mallets and they kill the teacher like in front of all the kids. Um, so they basically kind of protected her but they killed the teacher in another bloody gruesome death. That's at least like the third death in the movie. and. Let's see, Nora, Nola, Nora said that she doesn't feel threatened by Candy now, that she's been captured or something. Um, so there's some kind of a psychokinetic or psycho connection with her between all this stuff. Um, but we find out that that Mike guy comes to Frank's house again and tells him about the, uh, about the children, about the... Um, whatever the disturbed children is what he calls them and he says that they're like at the house of the therapist he's like oh you didn't know that they were there like yeah they're like maybe that's where they took her or whatever so so he's like okay i'm going to that house so he goes there and the therapist is there and the therapist confronts him and kind of opens up about things that have been going on and he basically says that whatever that nora releases uh her rage they kill like so she talked about how her mom beat her and she got that all out and then these dwarves went and killed her grandma and they killed her grand or her mother i'm sorry and they killed her father and um you know if she freaks out that they could kill candy or whatever and he basically tells Frank to go talk to Nora, tell her that he wants her back and how he loves her and everything and try to smooth things over and keep her attention and keep her calm while the therapist is going to go into this house with all these dwarf creatures that are like sleeping in like bunk beds. There's like two rows on each side of them and they have her there and he's going to sneak in there and get her out like while he keeps Nora calm. He goes and talks to her and he's telling her how he loves her and he wants everything to be fine and and she says, you know, I'm too strange for my old life, like I'm on a new strange adventure and stuff and he's like, okay, like I want to be with you on this adventure and um, she's basically like, 
okay and she like lifts up like her white robe and then we see like growths on her stomach and stuff and basically she has kind of like a womb like outside of her stomach like attached to her and um she goes and she bites it and blood comes out and stuff and it's all this thick blood and she tears it open and then like one of those babies that comes out like one of those creatures and it's just all bloody and gross and she starts licking it and she's like cleaning the the newborn baby and like a cat does kind of you know or I guess any animal I don't know but I know cats it's kind of what she reminded me of or an animal basically how they give birth and uh, it was like man that was a pretty disturbing gross scene and uh, <laughs> let's see here But she basically, um, she says, you know, as she's cleaning it and stuff, she's like, she basically freaks out and she's like, I know these are all lies, like you're lying. She's like, I disgust you, like you hate me. And she's like saying this while she has like the blood like on her chin and stuff around her mouth. And it's like, oh man. All this time the therapist is trying to sneak out there, um, sneak the girl out and all those dwarfs, the brood or whatever, they freak out and uh, start attacking him basically and he has a pistol so he starts like blowing them away, killing them like one by one and, but they're like jumping on him and there's too many of them and they basically kill him. And so the candy girl goes and runs like into a closet or a room and uh, they're they're fighting like the door like busting through it and stuff and there's like blood and they're like punching through the door trying to get to her. And so there's the struggle with Frank and Nora, and uh, and he's he's like you know he's like if you kill Candy or whatever like I'll kill you and she's like kill me kill me and he basically like strangles her to death and and I think the other the brood just dies or something and then he basically goes and saves Candy. That's the end of the movie. So. <laughs> Pretty good ending, I guess. I guess in this one, the good guys got away, in a sense. But yeah, it's, it's definitely a strange movie. It's definitely Cronenberg, and it could have you know a lot of analysis to it, but this is just me just generally talking about it. I really enjoyed it. Um, so I want to look at the case and stuff. Let's look at this. I love this Criterion case. You see her see that kind of frightened look on her face like scared and she's like protecting her infant it's very like animalistic but it's cool how they put like the photograph there of her it's like a cartoon but it's like a black and white photograph and it's weird but you see kind of like the baby the outside of the sack thing let's see not nothing on the back really but let's see what it says it says a disturbed woman is receiving a radical form of psychotherapy Okay, psychotherapy is a good word that I've been saying. At a remote, mysterious institute. Meanwhile, her five-year-old daughter, under the care of her estranged husband, is being terrorized by a group of demonic beings. How these two storylines connect is the shocking and grotesque secret of this bloody tale of monstrous parenthood from David Cronenberg, starring Oliver Reed and Samantha Eager. With its combination of psychological and body horror, The Brood laid the groundwork for many of the director's films to come, but it stands on its own as a personal, singular, singularly scary vision. So I wonder, in its filmography, where this came. It was made in 1979. Wow. Now, I want to share something that's really cool that I did not know about this. So the Criterion's great for just having great packaging extra features on the blu-ray just great transfers and just a lot of bonus stuff and guess what's a bonus in this one a little poster and it's got some stuff on it too um, that it talks about the movie so there's that but it's basically a poster over here and i would like to put that up on my wall can't put it up on the section that you see here it's pretty much covered but I've got more room on my wall I'll just have to maybe film at some different angles and but it's pretty cool 
their faces aren't really dark like that. I mean, that's how they did like on the cover where it's like kind of like black and white, but yeah, the faces are just a little bit not human. <laughs> Cronenberg noted of his most personal film, The Brood is my version of Kramer vs. Kramer, but more realistic. I don't know what Kramer vs. Kramer is, so I don't really get that. But, uh, given that this is a Cronenberg film, the implication is that divorce is somehow communicable or heritable. Hmm. How Raglan Raglan, that's the name of the therapist. In the brood, the psychoplasmic therapy of Dr. Hal Raglan, or Oliver Reed, an actor, likewise demonstrates that the cure can be more dangerous than the malady. In one-on-one, -on -one, one stage competitions with his patients, the doctor of psychology plays the role of an abusive parent. He shames his charges, his rage then services taking the form of boils presumably lanced by the talking cure. Hmm. Yeah, so there's a lot that I don't really get on the first viewing that I'd have to watch over and over again to kind of even break down the ideas that this movie is putting out. But just to enjoy it just generally as a as a good movie, you know. It's great. It's good. So, I definitely recommend it. I think that anybody that likes horror movies can enjoy it. I don't think it's too far out there. It is out there, but it's not like Videodrome. It's not like Naked Launch, for sure. But I think it's something the more the general population, general horror fans can enjoy. So, awesome. That's the brood, guys. All right. Peace out. Love you. God bless. Have a good one.